It's the George Plaster Show. 30 years of the best sports talk in Middle Tennessee. Featuring Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Watson Brown. And it's a shame it's taken this long to get an introduction for this Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Kelly Holcomb, along with young gun Billy Derrick. And now, here's your host, George Plaster. Hello again, everybody. Welcome in. It's a beautiful, I guess it's beautiful. It's cloudy and overcast. It's a Monday, and we got a lot of things to talk about all of a sudden. Vandy has a new basketball coach. We'll get into that in just a moment. First things first, let's go to Murfreesboro and say hello to Kelly Holcomb. Kelly, how are you? I'm great, George. How you doing? I'm good. Have a good weekend. Good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. good. Watched a little golf, uh, ate a little bit, went to church yesterday, and took my uh, took our oldest daughter out. That's uh, that's about to have a child in a couple of months. So old gray haired guy here is about to be a granddaddy. Oh my goodness! That's yeah, scary. that is scary. It was scary when I first had children too. Me being a dad, that was kind of scary. I can see why. <laughs> I came through it okay. I mean, we've raised yeah, some, we some really pretty, good kids. You my, my, my did kid, my good. wife, yeah, my wife did a really good job of raising them despite me. There's no question. Let's check in with Billy Derrick. Billy, did you have a good weekend? I did. It was good. It was good. The allergies are kicking in, though. They're kicking oh, yeah. my butt right now. They're doing it to a lot of us. I have, I've got this cough where anytime, <coughs> anytime Thank I you. try to laugh or, or, you know, talk loud i start coughing so yeah might be, gonna have to battle through today be tough yeah okay <laughs> so vandy has a hire mark byington from james yeah. madison is their new coach uh, the reactions of most people are not a lot of reaction because not many people know a lot about him um he is been in and around the Southeast area uh, before James Madison uh, down in Georgia has Bobby Crimmins ties. I'm looking forward to uh, to talking to him about that because I've dealt with Bobby Crimmins and he's a live wire. He's a, a good man. Anyway, reactions. Here's the first one. After seven years of really not being a factor, this doesn't appear to be a job that people were knocking down the doors trying to get. That's one thing that hits me right off the bat. And I, I would agree with that. I mean, I think there's some there's some fans out there certainly that think Vanderbilt is is still a top tier job, but I mean, it's pretty obvious. You know, they wanted Dusty May. Dusty May ended up going to Michigan. Vanderbilt then wanted Danny Sprinkle from Utah State, who ended up going to Washington. And by the way, Washington doesn't even have an AD right now. So I think that kind of tells you a little bit there. Vanderbilt got a, a decent option. This is a this is a good, not great hire. It's a normal hire. Jerry Stackhouse was not a normal hire. That was an outside-the-box type hire who had no prior college coaching experience. Byington does, and I, I just I think it's safe. It's a it's a high floor. We don't know about his ceiling. I mean, he's won in most of the places he's been, Georgia Southern and uh, James Madison. I think it's interesting. We talked about Dennis Gates really struggling this year. Dennis Gates in year one had come from – I can't, always forget the school. Where did Gates come from? Gosh, I don't remember, but keep going. Well, it might be tough. Uh, but, oh, okay. No, Gates – Brought basically all all of his good players from the school he was previously at. Don't know the school. Can't remember it. If anybody does, put it in the comments. They were really good year one. Year two, they kind of flamed out a little bit. So Hoop I wonder the bed is what they did. Yeah. I wonder if if Byington's able to do that, something similar at Vanderbilt, can you keep it going? 
you know, because now Dennis Gates is on the hot seat. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not one a lot of people wanted. I, I don't even re- I, I didn't really even know Byington's name until a few days ago when I started looking into him, but, uh, he's been the coach at James Madison for four seasons and he's done a good job. He's done a good job, but he's only made one tournament in his 12 years of being a head coach. So, you know, will that translate to the SEC? We'll see. But it's I will say it's a normal hire, and let's face it, we're not used to Vanderbilt doing normal things. Yeah, I don't know anything about him, guys. It's just – it's kind of uh, – you know, we, we're going to have Kerry on here later, but like he said last week, you know, he still thought that Vanderbilt was a job that people wanted, but – you know, y'all, y'all are telling me that that just doesn't seem like the case. And I think, you know, I, I'd heard, uh, you know, bringing football around you, UCLA, when Chip Kelly left UCLA and went to Ohio State, I heard, you know, through the grapevine that they didn't have hardly any NIL money at UCLA. That's why he's like, I can't compete anymore. So he went to Ohio State to be the offense coordinator. So nowadays, you know, I, I, I talked about that last week, George. You have to ask when you're in an interview process. Now, you, you always ask stuff if you're the coach, if you're getting interviewed, you're going to ask things. But now you have to ask, like, can I compete with – can can we get NIL money? Uh, do, are we lucrative enough to get transfer kids in here? Can, can we get those – and you have to ask those questions. And I, I'm just not sure that um, – I'm not sure that Vanderbilt's there yet. I'll be honest. I, I don't know the ins and outs of all this stuff, but I, I just I don't know if they're there or they're going to be there ever. And I guess we'll just have to see. But like nobody really knows. I mean, he's a no-name guy, but somebody has to make their name at some point. And you know, Nick Saban, nobody knew him a long time ago. He had to make his name at some point. Like Bill Belichick, same thing. You've you've got an opportunity now to coach in the SEC. Now, what are you going to do with it? And then that, this might be the greatest hire ever. We we just don't. Time will tell. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it, it's it's way early to start speculating on what this guy is or what he isn't. I'll continue to say one thing that I've babbled for a while now. It's going to be very important for the new coach to have an early. Uh, get to know former players. Former players are where you find your most loyal supporters and people that have gone on to do good things in their various communities. Uh, That's where NIL should start. Jerry Stackhouse was, as I have put it bluntly, a complete zero in that area. Made no effort to get to know many of the former players. Um, this guy, th- this is going to be one of the important jobs early that he do that. Billy, what else we got? Well, we've got, uh, of course, Tennessee moving on. They're going to play Creighton on Friday night, and they they bullied Texas, but that, that got really dangerous late there. Uh, Tennessee's offense was pretty bad. Uh, they couldn't shoot. They couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. have to be reverting back to you so a lot, we'll, we'll go back to me um, so here's me the one thing we're going to talk about this with Kerry Keating Kelly I thought and I don't think this is good toward the end of the game nobody wanted the ball there was a little bit of not me uh, um, and y- y- that cannot be the case I agree, but like at the uh, at the most crucial part of the game, they made six free throws in a row, which actually won those guys the game. So uh, I think you're right. I, I mean, but uh, they they've got, like you said, they did their they did their work on the offensive glass, like rebound and things like that. They even alluded to that on the broadcast. I thought they did a really good job. I, I don't, you know, I I know Tony last week didn't think that they would play Texas. He thought they would probably play Colorado State, but I was like, Texas is a that, that's going to be a tough out. That uh, that kid, that uh, I forget his name, Tyrese, uh, Tyrese Hunter. Hunter. Tyrese Hunter. Yeah, that kid can play, man. And then the kid from, I was going to ask y'all about how did the kid from Vanderbilt? You know, he goes that the Desu kid, Dylan like he Desu. leaves Vanderbilt. And, yeah, he goes, he leaves Vanderbilt and goes to Texas. So he played. Those two guys are really good basketball players, and it was a tough out. But uh, anytime you advance in this, it doesn't matter how it looks, just advance. And when when the uh, the old so-called saying, nut-cutting time Survive came. Five in advance. 
Yeah, t- t- uh, no, Dalton Connect took the ball. He made those free throws, and then, hey, they're moving on. Yeah, he uh, he missed the front end of one of them late. I don't know if that was the last one he took, but he – uh-uh. They they did it at the free throws. That, that's a good point, Kelly. They they did what they had to do late to get the win and survive. Right. And now they've got Creighton Friday night, the late game. Probably be probably won't start till about nine twenty. <laughs> Tony will have an interesting. Uh, if we're being real, Tony will have an interesting post game, which will go well into Saturday morning. They do always yes. get screwed with their tip times in the tournament. I'll say they always, almost always, get that late start, that really late start. Uh, so Tennessee and Creighton on Friday, of course, rest of the Sweet 16 Thursday. We'll get into that with uh, with Kerry Keating. Uh, a couple of NFL notes. We did see the Titans pick up Legereus Sneed. Good signing. The Kansas City uh, Chiefs. That's a good sign. Really good. One heck of a signing. Um, George, have you seen the details of that yet? I still haven't. Um, uh, not really. I, I guess the truth of it is I don't care. It was yeah. a good signing. <laughs> yeah. That's he, and now, because he is a shutdown. He is oh, a absolutely. legit shutdown corner. Billy, you look like you have gas. <laughs> well, I did. Billy, did you bring some throat means. lozenges, man? Did you bring some throat lozenges? I don't think that's going to help. It will it help, I promise. All right, maybe I'll get some. We'll never know. Good gracious, Billy. I like be professional, dude. You got to come prepared, Hoss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord we're what eight minutes into the show and i've already broken down yeah um but yeah legerius sneed to the titans and now their corners are sneed and chidobia woozy from the Bengals. that's i'd say that's an upgrade from christian fulton and that's whoever pretty good else. a woozy eh? yes. a woo- that's not I bad it, i think it's just a woozy actually not a woozy a eh? i always thought it was a woozy eh? well it sounded good it does sound good. Keep going. Well, the the hip drop tackle is dead in the NFL. It's official. And that'll be really interesting, you know, when that happens, say because it's going to happen. There's 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 going to be a hip drop tackle and maybe a lot more until guys get used to not making hip drop tackles. But I'd say guys like tight ends and big running backs like Derrick Henry probably uh probably benefit from this because that was a useful tool especially with some good linebackers. But now it's dead. So, no hip drop tackle. Uh, let's see here. That's pretty much it. Uh, got the women's. It? Yeah, the women's tournament. MTSU lost to LSU. Uh, boy, they played. They had everybody's attention they, at halftime. They did. They played good into the third quarter, and then LSU started putting that D on those girls. And then they end like they they were. I think middle got up by ten. Seven, yeah, something like that. And then they end up losing by thirty. I mean, it's – yeah, LSU, like, when they turn it on, they got some girls that can score. And when you're MTSU and they start d you up, if you stop hitting shots, that's when these big schools just tear you up. So, after the break, he looks very professorial. Did he have glasses last week? He, I think he did, yeah. Did he? I think he did, yeah. Okay. Kerry yeah. Keating will join us from over in North Carolina. We'll get his reaction to Vandy's hiring, and then we'll move on to a tournament that really has a lot of chalk. Only one double-digit team in there, and it's North Carolina State. We're back after this. It was the most horrible experience that any mother could ever go through. I knew that I needed to get help. My friend, she immediately said, you need to call Bart Durham. And you guys were there within an hour. You guys are like family for us. Yeah, sure is nice to connect with the people that you're doing your best to help. As the trusted premier custom home builder in Middle Tennessee, Donnelly Timmons has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Whether you're looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and every remodel is unique, luxurious, and completed on time within budget. Founders Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly have over 25 years of construction experience in the Nashville area. Together, they have completed projects in Forest Hills, Oak Hill, 
Green Hills, Franklin, and Brentwood. Dustin and Joey believe that communication is the most important aspect of all construction projects. Therefore, they personally manage each project themselves and are involved in job site activities on a daily basis. Their commitment to quality and integrity has earned them an outstanding reputation among their clients. Contact them to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects. Give them a call at 615-456-7983 or log on to DonleyTimmons.com. I'm Watson Brown. I'm Kelly Holcomb. I'm Billy Derrick. We're the George Plaster Show. We've been Nashville's best sports talk for the last 30 years. And you know what? We still are. Catch us live weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time in Nashville on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, the podcast version is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Looking for more than just awards and trophies? Southern Trophy House is your one-stop solution. For over 60 years, their team has created lasting impressions with a personalized touch. From embroidery to screen-printed apparel to corporate awards, signs, and name badges, they have everything you need to keep your brand shining bright. With their knowledgeable customer service team, you can relax as they create, produce, pack, and ship merchandise and awards on time and on budget. That includes etched crystal awards, custom-cut acrylic, name badges, embroidered Richardson ball caps, banners, screen-printed T-shirts, laser-engraved Yeti cups, and knives. Recognize your hardworking team from Southern Trophy House, where they do their best to help you recognize your best. Located at 2705 Nolansville Pike in Nashville, give them a holler, 615-256-7295. Visit southerntrophy.com, Southern Trophy House, for all your personalization and recognition needs. For over 35 years, Wilson Bank & Trust has been committed to providing customized banking solutions to help individuals, families, and businesses in Tennessee achieve their goals. As your full-service community bank, we are proud to offer loans with competitive rates, local decision-making, and fast, friendly service from our experienced lenders. No matter where you are on your financial journey, Wilson Bank & Trust is ready to help you take the next step. Visit your nearest Wilson Bank & Trust office or online at wilsonbank.com to get started today. Member FDIC, Equal House. Housing lender. We are back in a lot of hoops to talk about as we head over to North Carolina and say hello to a good friend of ours. Carrie Keating looking very professorial. Carrie, how are you? I'm doing great. Great first weekend of the tournament. Uh, I realized on that promo shot there, I'm going to have to call uh, Southern Trophy House to see if they do any uh, fathead, new fathead shots. Because that one you got up to me, that looks like about a 40 year old shot from back in the 95 days. That looks like when I was in, in uh, back running around the West End in, in Nashville. We got to update that promo shot glass. Yeah, it's possible we do need to work on Throw the glasses that. on that one. It might look a little better. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll work on that if you say so. So, are you supposed, oh, first of all, let, let's go to the Vandy hire real quick. Yeah. Carrie, it doesn't feel like they had a lot of doors being knocked down by people dying to have this job. Well, we go through the cycle every year of who the hot name is, right? So if you're if the timing of it is that your job is open, you might you might fall into a little bit of luck and get a guy that maybe you weren't going to get within a contract or, or a buyout if you wanted to get your guy out. But obviously, the job was open and the hot names were available. The guys that had gone into the tournament and one and sort of kind of fit that profile right you, you know that i know that having been there and understanding that a little bit and even though it's been some time it hasn't changed much it's still an academic based school it is in a conference that's heavily tilted and has been heavily tilted and now legally tilted by the nil 
but that should be an excuse. You have to find someone who can embrace the challenges, uh, who can look at them as advantages. Uh, I think they were right in trying to test the waters with, with Kyle Smith and Danny Sprinkle because those I know those guys. They were West Coast guys when I was out in the West Coast, if you will. Kyle made his mark and went back into the Ivy League. So, you know, fit the mold, if you will, a little bit. Uh, I think Mark will be great. And I don't know Mark personally. I know him from following a little bit of their conference this year since one of my former assistants is in that conference. Um, and I know that he did a lot at James Madison and they were purporting James Madison to be more than it appeared to be. And even though the rankings can be kind of misleading in terms of how you get ranked at certain times during the season and who you're playing, mm -hmm. they took care of business and they put themselves in a position to be nationally recognized and then did their job and made the tournament. And that really, in the end of the day, is what you have to do to have, have a chance at a job like this. And now it remains to be seen if it is a good fit. You know, I, I think I'm sure you've been talking about the fact that someone that was there before Jerry Stackhouse that didn't seem to be a good fit has now put himself back in the tournament and Bryce Drew. I thought that was a good fit. I think people might have thought that was a good fit at the time. So. Hey, look, this day and age of transfer portals and, and one and done players and, and, and immediates, uh, you you have coaches that are going to be moving in, in one or two years now too. that everyone's got to beat the horse out of town. I think Vanderbilt's best interest is they can do everything they can to keep Mark around for as long as possible. Kerry, are you going under the assumption that Kentucky is going to fire um, John Calipari? If anybody has the money to do it, given – what we know about his contract, they certainly can come up with that. I, I, I can't imagine any AD, and again, this is you're talking to the to the son of a of a of a former lifetime AD who understands this. You, you never want to put yourself in a position that you can't get out of. Like these all lifetime contracts, like even these contract extensions, all of those ADs, if they're worth their salt, they know that there are optics involved in contracts to help the cause locally. Alumni-wise, certainly recruiting-wise, nationally, meet, we have, the, the optics need to be helped with contracts for your coaches. Only the coaches and the ADs really know what's behind that unless the coach has the loose lips to really divulge. Or in certain cases, in the Freedom of Information Act, you can really get into the details of what those contracts are and how to get out of them. I, I, I have to imagine that Mitch had an out for that. And, and that there was protection of that, even if the contract says they owe them $33 million. I think it's at the point now where they've tried this and tried that, changed the staff, changed that. You, you can you can nitpick all you want about Calipari's lack of coaching acumen or lack of ability to adjust after he adjusted in the beginning before all this came about. I think he's smart enough to make a readjustment based on the current landscape. I think he honestly did think he had a team. And I got to be honest with you, a lot of people did think he had a team looking at that bracket that could come out of the region. Talent-wise, it was there. But it's a different era. It's a different age. And it's not spilt milk, but you are going to play against teams that are older, more experienced, less intimidated by the Kentucky brand. I don't think it warrants to a change right now. But I do think what has happened now, given all of this noise, is there needs to be a silencing of that either on, on Kentucky's part with Calipari in hand, or you will see that change in all likelihood next year. I don't think it'll happen this year. Okay. Ironically, um, Bruce Pearl's loss maybe muzzled a tad bit what was going on in Lexington. Kerry, when I look at that, especially after watching San Diego State just steamroll Yale, Bruce Pearl's got to be kicking himself. Matchups in the tournament are paramount. I mean, I remember those days when, when we were waiting for our, our number to be called and we kind of had an idea of what our seed may be. We had a little bit of like when we were at the UCLA runs, we were a two three each year. You kind of knew who the seven tens might be, and you were a little concerned about the 14, the way it was structured then, non play in days back then. Um, I, you know, I, I watched the Auburn team play App State this year again. I referenced back to, to the Sun Belt and watching my former assistant at Dustin Kearns at, at App State win that league outright and beat Auburn. And I give credit to Bruce for going to play at App State. And I'm just shocked at what they did after that game because I thought that their guards wanted no part of pressure. 
I didn't think their bigs would end up being as good as they were, and credit to them for having a, a good rest of the season because this was an early December game. I think the better team won that day when they played at App State. I didn't watch the full Yale game, but I can tell you that as much as you could say what's ahead of what happened, in this case, San Diego State, which may have been a better matchup for Auburn than Yale was, the bottom line is you have to find a way and adapt and adjust. And, and the teams that make it each year to the Sweet 16, or at least in the hunt of that, to get to what's maybe the more favorable matchup. You know, George, I go back to the days when I first had a chance to kind of start getting involved in the NCAA tournament. And I think for the better teams, historically, the toughest games in terms of ones that you really have a chance to just not have any drama and win are the first and second round, and really the second round more than the first. And look what we have now. We have the better team, Sands, maybe uh, the double-digit seed in NC State. Those are always the tougher games. There's innate pressure on it. It's the opening weekend. Maybe you play a later game and you just watch some earlier upsets and now you're on edge. What kind of team do you have? Do you have veteran leadership that doesn't get caught up in that? Do you have freshmen that are like, oh, we can't, oh, we, we, our team's already lost. Uh, there's been an upset already. You know, there's so much stage pressure on that. But the bottom line is when you're a four seed who, who a lot of people thought was, was under seeded and could be a team to make it through, and if anyone's going to beat UConn, it would be them. They stacked up UConn's bracket with the UConn, with Illinois, with Iowa State, you certainly expected Bruce to be there because they did come around and, and play well at the end of the year. You're always going to go back in hindsight in this tournament and say what could – not just if you filled out a bracket and it got busted, but as a coach, you just know it's so close. The margin of error is so close when you, when you don't take advantage of your opportunity. And, and I, I think Bruce is probably going to even more so watch the San Diego State-Connecticut game than the San Diego State Yale game and say that was our real opportunity. Yes. I, I think they probably had a better chance of beating Connecticut had they gotten there than what might have what could have been before. That that that's that's the margin of error that gets magnified as you get down the road because they probably would have played a more complete and Auburn Bruce Pearl like game against Connecticut than they did against Yale. I want to get a thought or two from you on Tennessee. Obviously Saturday night wasn't real pretty. One thing, a couple of things concern me. Vescovy is nowhere to be found offensively, and I think that's a mistake. And secondly, Kerry, I thought late in the game, a lot of people looked like it was a hand grenade. I don't want any part of this. Did you well, feel that way at all? We talked last week with the crew about Tennessee, and the reason why I thought that they could get to this point was because of their guards. And you may have a little bit of, of, of savior syndrome here with Dalton. You know, like he's the guy and let's put him on the stage and let's put it all on his shoulders. Your, your backcourt needs to show up in the tournament for you to advance. Your backcourt needs to show up in the tournament for you to win, especially in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. You need to have guards that understand time and score, circumstance, everything that comes with that. I, I know that Rick always valued that. I remember when I first came across Rick when he had TJ Ford. And when he was out and about on the circuit, when we would sit there and talk in the stands, we're recruiting, you know, we're watching kids play. You, you talk about your team. You talk about kids. He would go on and on about TJ Ford in the film sessions. Like, I, I just know that Rick has always valued his relationship with his guards like that. And you can't you can't hide if you expect to be Tennessee in advance and put this all on, on, on Dalton, it's just, it, it won't work. It, it's hard for one guy it's, it, to my knowledge and my recollection if Danny Manning's only been that the only guy that's ever done that to really just take the entire team on his shoulder all the way through six games. Maybe Glenn Rice did that a little bit in 89, but he wasn't the one that made the free throws in overtime. That was your point guard, Ramil Robinson. Like I can go, you know, you can bring all the, all the examples up. I think as it relates to Tennessee, their backcourt cannot be MIA. They have to have an impact on both ends of this game for Tennessee to advance. Okay, Kelly. Yes, sir. There he is. So you were really big on Kerry. You liked him a week ago. Probably. Man, I do. I love I love Coach Keating, man. He's awesome. I mean, I, I wish to have him on here every week. I love him. Well, hey, call, hey just it. call up, call up Dustin and Joey at Donley Timmons. Let's get a little bump, and uh, and I'm ready to go. I don't need a place to stay, <laughs> but if they got a guest house. I can come do this live too. 
Guest house. Only in Raleigh. It's, 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 it's only every my house, man. I, they keep putting George's house up on the promo, and I keep telling him, like, just let me stay in the pool house, man. No. Now, unless that's no, the house no. that Mark is getting. Like, now I've also figured out how you guys know everything because obviously you get in bed with the biggest, best builder in town who's going to be building <laughs> houses for these guys. I know from firsthand who makes those calls when the negotiations are going on with the coaches. It's the wives. They're the ones that got all the dirt. So when the wives call up to us and Joey about, hey, where are you building our house? You guys already know who's getting the job. Like, oh, what are we doing here? Listen to that. I'm, I'm on. To, I am right. so on to you guys. I can't even tell you. I love it. I know Plaz. I know Plaz is a smart dude. I've been knowing this for years. Boy, nobody else well, seems to think that. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, Kerry, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> to his is own. Whatever, hey, whatever so I got to do to get I, back on. I was probably going to buddy. I should have probably buddied in, but I was going to ask about Auburn. How big of – how big of a deal when Jalen Williams gets hurt at the beginning of the game? And then, I mean, I know he came back, but I can remember Bruce, Bruce Pearl being in the locker room talking about, hey, they got five guys. We got 10. We need to use that to our advantage. And then the Baker Mazzara kid gets kicked out of the game for doing something stupid. How big of a factor was that? I'm going to, I'm going to let you in on a little secret since my coaching career is still on pause and now I'm allowed to illegally legal gamble and, and join pools. I actually took Baker Mazar in our points pool. So when he goes out of the game, I was like, I ain't even watching this crap anymore. And he got no. thrown out of the game. I just need to score points, right? Uh, but, to, but to your point, Kelly, I, again, you're back to that fine line in the tournament where it's not best of three, best of five, best of seven. You have to win the game that you're playing in. <laughs> when, you, when you're putting forth in front of your own team, your own strength of depth, in this case, 10 guys, and a key guy goes out, albeit in the first two minutes of the game before you can even kind of get into that flow of that rotation, it's going to have an effect on your team. I mean, this tournament does a lot of crazy things to a lot of kids. I mean, let's be honest, even though they're getting older and they're sixth and seventh and eighth year kids, and there's more on the line to this because they want to make sure they live up to their NIL deals, whether they actually have that in the contract or not, like this is changing a little bit. But the one thing that hasn't changed is the decision-making and some of the pressure that the tournament puts on the coaches and, more importantly, the kids. And then the disconnect or the, or, or, or the lack of connection that good coaches or any coaches have with those kids to make the right decisions. The choices you make are going to shape you and none more evident than in these games. So if you don't have all hands on deck and that's how you've been playing all year, that's a big change and a big shift. I don't think it's an excuse or a reason. I don't think Bruce would use it, use it as that, Kelly. But I think in terms of you relying on your teammates and knowing what you're going to get and expecting that to happen and that it's not there for the whole game, it throws you off a little bit. And all it takes is one little window for the other team to kind of sniff that out. And even a team like Yale. And, and you're going to see that more and more and more. We're going to see way more, I think, of, of these type of tournaments as long as it's still around, right? We're going to see double-digit seeds um, making it through to the the second weekend, maybe one or two, and then then the, then the powers will win out in the end. The ones that survive all that will eventually survive a little bit easier, as we talked about in that second into the third round. Uh, you know, I, I think I, again, I go back to this killer. Like, I if if I'm if I'm at a at a barbecue in back in Bruce Pearl's backyard this weekend, no, no you know, and we're watching and we're watching the game. Yeah. I think he's going like. We could have beat these guys. I don't think yeah. he, again, I don't think he's sitting there talking lamenting about the Yale deal as much as he already is. I say, Bruce, don't take a picture and quote me on this, but you didn't win. Is I Aaron Kraft invited to that deal? <laughs> hey, I was long, I was long gone from Tennessee before I got about invited to any barbecues outside of outside of a, a, a Knoxville. So I don't know. I can't answer that question. Yeah, I'm sure you can't. So, 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 Cal, I'm, yeah, George, George he, he's ruined my train of thought, which is very easy to do with all the concussions that I've had. So, uh, y'all were talking about Calipari, and, and, I've, and I've talked about this before. Like, it's got to be frustrating to the fans because they, you know, he, he's, he's, he's made that university a one-and-done deal. I mean, he, he said that, he, and, and that's what all these guys do. But, like, it's got to be frustrating for fans – because they can't get used to the team. There's always turmoil. And now with the NIL, all this stuff's going to be turmoil for all these fans. But I just can't see Kentucky winning it anymore because you're always going to go up against a team like this Oakland team that, you know, 
all these kids from Kentucky are going to be good pros. You got nobody from Oakland that's probably they, they might have one or two, maybe. I don't know that gets a shot. But like it's it's gotta be frustrating. And I just don't see him getting to that level anymore because there's no continuity on your team. I, I feel like this is a little bit and maybe this next season, if he is there, will will prove even more to be a little bit of an indictment on how he's coaching these guys rather than how he's managing them. Prior to the leveling of the playing field of the Kentuckys of the world, because let's face it, they had all of these things in place before everyone else got a chance to put them in place recently with NIL and the transfer portal. The combination of those two things leveled out that talent, whether it's by having older kids, by having immediate access to transfers, even though he still has maybe four or five pros on his team, Think back to Kelly, you mentioned like what he was saying, like, I'm here for their future. And I know it ruffled right. some feather, it ruffled some feathers for some for, for some for some of, of the big blue nation. Like, well, wait a minute. What, then we're just a, a pit stop. Like, why aren't we trying to win? It's not like we're not trying to win, but realize how good these kids are. And then he'll spit out the billions of dollars in contracts that he has represented. You know what? He's right. But that's really not what the goal is now because everyone else can do that too. And financially, the, the playing field has been leveled. We, we can go into it, the unwritten's and the, and the known slash unknowns of what happened in the past and why Kentucky could win easier. I think this is just something that really is putting him in a position where like, okay, you have to be less manager of ego and future pro. And you have to be more coach. Now, I don't know if that means he goes out and changes his coaching staff again. I'm, I'm fairly certain he's got more than capable assistants that can coach. But it's a little bit of a shift going on. And, and look, if, I, if I'm in that room and, and listening and flying the wall, I bet you that's what Mitch is telling him. Got to stop managing. We got to start coaching some more. Yes, they're going to be good. Yes, they're going to be great. Yes, they're going to add to the billions in contracts. That can be representative of what we do to get the kids here. Yes, we'll have NIL available. Everyone's going to come out and support this. We're never going to be in any type of need to get players. We just need to maybe do a little bit better in the year or the two years or whatever the balance of the roster is that they're here. There's no reason why they should be. It, it shouldn't be like they're all just going to be good when they get to the NBA. They're, they're good enough now. You have the national freshman of the year. You have a guy that came back and proved he can be the best player in the league when he wants to be. You got to coach him a little bit more. I mean, it's, it, to me, that that's really the, the, the simplest way of, of approaching it is he's going to have to figure out how to coach him or get someone in there to help him coach them. Because I do think this too, guys, I, I think what you're going to see, and it started to happen a little bit, I think more just from an NIL management standpoint of the basketball aspect, I think as the business of college changes to be an actual business with, with antitrust violations applicable, with potential yep. unionization and contracts, with benefits and all these things, with the shift of the, of the financial attribution of scholarships being given more to student support and help because it's cheaper than full-time employee support, and then the money to pay for the kids to go to school coming from marketing deals with and, 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 and in association with the school locally and the kids. You're going to have guys on a staff that get it but are not coaching because you even more so now than before, you have to remove the head coach from the non-coaching duties and put him more into the coaching. That's what he's there to do is to coach the team. But I know this even as far back as the 20 years when I started and going through it. I used to tell the young guys like, hey, you want to be a head coach, you better learn how to do the other 90% of the things that don't have anything to do with coaching because that's what you're doing as a head coach every day. If it was 90% non-coaching before NIL and transfer portals, it's got to be like 95% now, unless you find a guy who understands that and can remove that 90%, take it down to about 50, because you have to coach more now than you ever did before. Like I, I, I reached out to, to one of my guys today, hey, how's things going? He's like, I'm just, I'm in, I'm just in here uh, re-recruiting my players. I'm re-recruiting. Well. So this yeah. is the problem. Get somebody in there that can help you take care of that while you can go coach the team. To me, at a highest level, the first guy that figures that out, when the, when the playing field gets leveled out, that has a, a high-level executive GM, chief of staff on their staff, 
that guy is going to be in the mix every year if his head coach can coach. Trust me when I tell you, because that's where this is all going. That, to me, is position number one for Kentucky to take care of. If they do that, and that alone, and Calipari can, can start coaching now, if he's got it, you'll see a shift. And they can afford to do that. I, I, I don't know anyone outside of the guy in the middle of our, the three of us right now that could do that right now, but there are guys out there that can do that. I'm not saying you two guys couldn't do it, but you guys got a good gig going on now. I mean, we, oh, yeah. Why, 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 why do you want to stop a great thing? No, absolutely. So can we go to a break and bring you back up? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, I, hey, look, I was hip drop tackling guys on the Vanderbilt intramural field back in 94. I know what it's about. I don't care about any rule changes. I'll always come back to talk about that. I love it. Kerry Keating rejoins us right after this. Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several iron mic pitching machines as well as a hit tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Forget the fact that Sir Speedy Music City is owned by my BGA classmate James Warren. Their work stands on its own merit. James and his staff do incredible work, as evidenced by the huge banners at the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. If you're looking for quality to help your marketing and business communications and you want it at a reasonable price, these are your folks. Call them at 615-832-9511 or go to print at sirspeedymusiccity.com and be sure to tell them Plaz sent you. Over the years, more men have started to seek help for hormone deficiencies and imbalances. And Dr. Jeffrey Lodge and wife Daphne, along with their experienced staff, give men the treatment required to improve their quality of life, improve your immune system, energy level, cognitive function, and more. There's no better time to achieve a healthy lifestyle. What are you waiting for? Give Cool Springs MD a call today for an appointment at 615 615- 486-3458 or visit the website coolspringsmd.com Convenience and value two words that we expect when we do business. Our goal at JHA Company is to deliver just that both to our school partners and to our customers. Whether you're purchasing photos, yearbooks, class jewelry, letter jackets, school spirit wear, or senior graduation products We strive to make the experience easy, convenient, and cost-effective. Find out more at jhacompany.com or call 615-867-6345 for more information. JHA, one source, one company. You know, Carrie Keating, uh, there in the right corner, brought up barbecuing earlier. And we went back into the annals of college coaching, and we found <laughs> old Carrie barbecuing out at Santa Clara. I guess who's going uh, to be that, Carrie? I, I can only imagine wh- wh- who's got some kind of dirt on me to send that picture. I think that's stuck on Wikipedia. The Wikipedia is a brutal place. They'll find the yeah. worst stuff and put it on there. Although I'll tell you what, that tri-tip is no joke out there. That's a California one. I can guarantee you that is some good tri-tip right there. Uh, Bob Horner to the rest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, uh, he's watching. Okay. I got three names that to me, I believe the Kentucky thing is close to 50-50 as to what they're going to do. And there are three home runs, and I want to see if you put anybody else in the three home run top tier. Billy Donovan, uh, Jay Wright, Brad Stevens. 
he could have ended after one because that's where I was going to go. I, I think Brad's smart enough to not go back to that. I think he's in a position now that that's better. Um, I don't know personally if he's got a coaching bug, but I can't imagine it's going to want to come back and deal with this. Jay sounds like the right person because he can handle it. Polished, obviously Hall of Fame, won a national championship. Um, I I think – now keep in mind, I've known Billy since we were growing up on the same street back in Long Island, albeit he's a little bit older. That's where they'll go first. I'd be shocked if they don't already haven't because he may have run his course in the NBA. He certainly proved he can coach in the SEC – Billy also, Blaz, was one of, if not the first guy. And our and our good our good friend uh, Eddie Fogler would call him out to the carpet on this now, if you remember those days, who expanded his staff into the gray area to give himself the best chance to coach. Again, I'm so happy you brought that up because it's validating what I think is going to reoccur and how people set up an organization at the highest levels. If anybody can do that, because they already did it successfully prior to all this, went to the highest level, had a pretty decent amount of success, albeit no NBA Finals appearances, if you will. I'm not even sure if they made it, if he did, um, and can coach and will remove all of the other distractions so that he can only do that and find the right people to run and operate the business, it would be Billy. I don't know anyone else that could do it. I mean, not yeah. right now. I think it, I think you, you could have ended after one. The other two sound good because of what they are and what they represent. Uh, I, I think for all of the things of, of what Kentucky needs, may need, if in fact it came up, it's the first. It's the first call, and maybe the only call. I, and and it, and he would shut it down right away. I don't think he would screw around with it. He would know. He would get it. Look, I know. I know his agent. He's here in town, right up the road from me. Um, not to say that I've already called him to figure that out or we'll try to have any scoop. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know Dustin and Joey of Raleigh. I wish I did. Maybe I can get a better crib, and a better backyard. But that be that be that as it may. Um, I think he's smart enough to take that call because financially it's about the same. And look, let's be honest. I, I think Billy's also smart to come out and say, yeah, it's not the NBA, but it's also not what I left. Right. He, it, right. It's, a little, it's a little bit of an in-between that he's going to see some future in this where this is going to become NBA-ish in that he can set up a front office. Right. He can he can actually I think he's the type of guy that would have the foresight to to set up a Kentucky as a pro model in terms of personnel so that when it comes down to me coaching this team, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, he's going to have to go on visits. He's going to have to dip around, know who's who. But he's going to have a guy that's going to come in and say, here are the five guys, coach. We vetted them all. Here are the five guys. We got to get three of them. I'll set up the calls. They're coming on campus. If we get three of these guys, we're good. That's it. There's no screwing around. I, I, I think I think Billy gets that. I I, I would love to see that because I, I, th I think that's exactly what would happen. Okay. I want to get your thoughts. Last night I watched uh, Grand Canyon, and there's no question about the level of talent that Bryce Drew has amassed there. When he was at Vandy, he sort of got the reputation of being a ball roller. And Charles Barkley kind of talked yeah. that out there again last mm. night and said in the second half, he didn't do anything. Do you think that's fair? Oh, I think it's fair when you have five assists in a game. Wow. But you, you, but you can't, you can't, you can't fault. You can't fault the fact that they got there with that. You got to go with what oh, got yeah. you there. You, they're not going to change. Now, right. here's what I love about here's what I love about Kenny and Charles, or maybe I don't love it. He don't even freaking watch college basketball during the year. You got no idea what's going on. They're just talking, and I love those guys. Ken, Ken, I've known Kenny. We went to the same high school. Obviously, he's way older. Knew him when he was out in L.A. But they've got their own stick and gig with Ernie and Shaq, and like it's 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 theater, it's drama to have them analyze stuff is crazy but at, at least where charles is coming from there's a little truth to that 
okay, maybe more than five assists might have been helpful, but that's what got Grant Canyon to that level. So you can't fault him for that. And if and if ball rolling, especially in this day and age, look, I'm going through ball rolling at the eighth grade level where kids don't want to even learn how to play. They just want to go out and just just let it rip on AU. Like that's not how it works. They so think their coach a, is a schmuck. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> they do, and their parents do. Their parents are even worse even than worse. Than they worse. Yeah, even worse. And sometimes they're right. Most That's of the times they're not. But Kelly, that being that being said, if he had that reputation, how you do something is how you do everything. Is that why they say? But it's working for Bryce now at a great place. And look, I mean, it, it weren't that far off from almost winning that game. Oh, I it, listen. It wasn't like they got it wasn't like they got blown out by fifty. Or 40, right? right? So, teach his own. Correct. Kelly, uh, close us out with a couple of good ones. Well, I I was thinking when you were talking about all this NIL stuff, you you, you seem like a guy that likes challenges. And and what what would you do as a head coach right now? Would you like being a head coach right now? How would you have to change being a head coach? As you learn, you talked about Billy Donovan, you know, obviously being at Florida, and then he goes to the NBA, and then there's somewhere in between. It's kind of like we, we've talked about it on the show, like this NIL stuff, all these coaches that are older coaches, they didn't sign up for this, and you got to change. you got to evolve. So how would you go about that? I, I go back, Kelly, to at, – at the at, and we'll talk highest levels, right, the top 80 schools. This has been been talked about for years and the yeah. only reason they couldn't secede is because of the stranglehold that the NCAA tournament had on the finances of supporting the other 99% of their finances in their athletic department. That's how big the tournament was and still is. When the next contract comes up and if it's restructured to take some of those monies and directly distribute them to the players, if, 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 the, if the units – aren't all going back to the conferences and letting the conferences distribute or not distribute or let them decide in a conference sense. If part of parcel of this goes to the players, you you may not see the same exact tournament. You may not see the same, the same teams in it, but I'm telling you what they're saying. Look at the sweet 16. Why are we worried about the first two weekends? Because we're going to be there anyway. Like you talk yeah. about a chalk bracket, like what's the big deal? We're going to be there anyway. The pundits will say, yeah, but you got the drama. and the fit. Like they don't care about the fans. They're trying to make the money. They're trying to get to the point where they can do what they want to do. And this being, Kelly, the older guys that have been through this change, they're trying to hold on to that in some way, shape, or form. Now, I, I think that the points we made about a guy like Billy going to a place like Kentucky, and, and it's an example – I'll be really curious in all of these coaching changes when guys have a chance to level set and set their staff and and, and their organization up. It's going to look a lot different. You're going to see a lot of interesting titles. You're going to see a lot of guys doing things that that other other coaches had to do in the past, and they're going to reduce the multitasking of the coaches. Like I'll I'll do the I'll 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 throw this one at you too, Kelly. As much as I would have one coaching acumen mind who can handle all of the logistics and business operations of what goes into coaching without having to worry about coaching recruiting. And this probably already happens. I would think I would also have one coach whose sole job and sole responsibility was to monitor. And this is what the pros do. This is why this goes back to the pros. When I was consulting for the Houston Rockets and when I was out in California, I was consulting, watching the other team's players at the Warriors games for free agent, rankings and knowledge in the off season exactly what's going to happen in college now because free agency is now here it's just not called free agency you would have a staff member whether it's a full-time assistant coach or a full-time staff member with synergy with all the film that's available with all the streaming every you can watch any game in any part of the country which you you couldn't do immediately before the stats are up there the comparisons are up there the styles are up there you need to have one person whose sole responsibility, that is player personnel. Not this um, director of player personnel. That gives me a chance to go on the practice court and maybe go out and semi-recruit within a 30-mile radius locally and test all those gray areas. No, that's out the window. There will be more specificity in staff members 
at the highest level than there ever was before because it's a different game now and it's changing year to year. I, I think that's probably the number one thing for any head coach coming into these top 80 schools for them to survive. Or what you're going to find are coaches that realize that they can't do that at the place that they're at and then they're leaving. They're, I was always one that was that wanted to go to a place and stay there for as long as possible. I know that's not realistic. It's certainly not not realistic now. And I, I give props to the guys that can that can disengage from that. And what it's doing, Kelly, is it's, it's taking even more shots at the relational attributes of coaching and making them even more transactional. The guys that can take the transactional part of this, and even in a year. Make it relational. Once again, what that goes back to is time. You need to hire guys that are going to buy you time as a coach to coach. And, yes, it's on the floor. It's film. It's strategy. It's in-game coaching. It's all the things that come with you as the face of the CEO. It's going on the big orange caravan. It's all those things. Be that That's what you need time for now is, as I mentioned, my, my Sunbelt guy. What's he doing today? He's re-recruiting his players. Well, he doesn't have maybe that wherewithal yet, but even at a place like that, you can buy that time back to re-recruit them as you're coaching them. Because what do they all think? I got mine here, got us to the tournament, we won a championship. That success now equates in the open market to me going to a higher level to go get this NIL money based on what I've already done. And in some cases, it can be life-changing money. In some cases, for a guy like Amanda Baycott here in the Triangle, it stops him from going to the NBA. It stopped him from going to the NBA. A million dollars a year. It drove Caleb Love to Arizona 100% because of the animosity in the locker room. And he's like, wait, I'm the guy that did this. Why is he the guy that did this? Like all of those things, management, time. Give the head coach back the time. So he doesn't have to go through this spin cycle every single year. Yeah, there'll be one or two guys. You've got 13 guys on a roster. You're not going to keep all 13. It's easier for nine to 13 who are unhappy with playing time to go. And coaches will let them go. Top eight, if you have a chance to keep your top eight after a successful season, and then those middling schools not lose five through eight because they think they can be better someplace else, you can do that during the season if you have someone on your staff that is also preparing you if they – just can't be convinced, and they leave. Next guy up. It, it's it's a it's a whole new world. It, 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 but the bottom line yeah. at the end of the day is as long as the tournament's around, the end result is still the same. How you get to the end result is way different. Back to the original question we've been talking about. If you're a head coach, you're there, and, and for all in all likelihood, you want to coach. This and this is the challenge for Calipari. He's always been a ringleader and a manager of people. I've known that since he was an assistant at Pittsburgh and I was a camper at Five Star and he's running around the thing. He's trying to manage people. He's trying to be P.T. Barnum. He's trying to be that guy. No one's ever really seen if he's outcoached another guy head up. No one's ever really seen that. You know why? Because his answer is, I got better players. And Johnny's and Joe's beat X's and O's in 95% of the time. But in Kentucky, that other 5% is magnified. You've got a small margin right there. And I'm not saying he can't coach. I'm just saying he chose to make his bed. And you know what? He's 10 generations wealthy because of it. God bless him. Smart man. Okay. Maybe smarter, maybe smarter than us. Stop there. We're done. <laughs> Kerry, you are the man. Enjoy it as brother. always. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk. I know we're going to be talking next week. So until next week. Until next La week. Let's go. The glasses will everybody. be there. I love it. That's right. <laughs> Kerry Keating, man, it was fun when he was in town. We used to have a blast. Uh, hard to believe that that's all been like 30 years ago since he was on Jan Van Bredikoff's staff at Vandy and later, of course, uh, up in Knoxville under Buzz Peterson at the University of Tennessee. When we come back, we'll have stat of the day. That may not be all that successful. And then mm. we'll talk about the NFL owners' meetings that are going on at this very moment. Stay tuned. Star Physical Convenience and Value. Star Physical Therapy was established in 1997 with one great mission to serve. If you're hurting, don't wait to receive physical therapy. You don't need a referral to see their physical therapist. 
and early morning and evening appointments are available. Make the call to 615-673-1420 and get rid of that pain. Star Physical Therapy, the official health provider of Football Friday. Venture Express has been helping people in this area for more than 40 years. They're headquartered in Murfreesboro with over 30 years of dedicated fleets involving production, manufacturing, and corrugated experiences. They're an asset-based company with over 700 tractors, 4,000 trailers, and 800 drivers. If you need their help, Dial them up, 615-793-9500, or log on to VentureExpress.com. Yo, you want to see something cool? No? Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Step into the scene! No, nobody can do it like me! Zoo Pals plate with the kick cuisine! I was the black top king, three six C's in my green machine. I was a kid and I was breaking down doors. Listen to the time, now we on a world tour. You were in a crash. Yeah. Your kids were in the car with you. We're very lucky to even be telling this story to you. Nikki treated us like family and she was very caring and loving and I'm just so grateful for that. She was somebody I could trust and being a veteran, that's so important to me. My kids are going to have a better life now because I don't have to worry about those expenses that we were out. Your family has really created a legacy of trust and I would recommend you to anyone. You know, starting to save for your future doesn't have to be difficult. Let Wilson Bank and Trust help tone up your financial goals this year. Our certificates of deposits or CDs can help your money work harder with our competitive rates, earning you more than ever before. WBT checking options allow you to earn rewards you can really use, like a high interest rate or cash back on check card purchases when you meet some e-banking qualifications. Visit your closest Wilson Bank and Trust office or online at wilsonbank.com to get started today. Member FDIC. Top of the hour on a Monday, rolling along. We've got Stat of the Day brought to you by John English Antique Sports and Cards in Shelbyville. They're open. During the week, Tuesday through Friday from noon to 5 and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5. Give them a call, 931-492-4304. All right, let's see what we've got today. For the fifth time since 1979, every number one and number two seed has made the Sweet 16. When was the last time this happened? Hmm. Hmm. God, it all just runs together. Yeah, I have no clue on that one, George. I'm like coming up blank there. Uh, it has not been that long ago. I, I, I didn't say, think so, but I don't remember. I want to say something crazy like either 17 or 18 that this happened. Um, let's just pull it up and see because uh, we might be here a while otherwise. All right, it's 2019. 19. 19. Okay. Gosh, I was going to say 19. So, you know, it Dude, may have lacked the, the first weekend lacked uh, not enough Yales. But I would yeah. also contend, guys, that in the end, the big boys are who everybody wants to see come sweet this 16 was, time. This was perfect for TV. I guarantee you there were executives from Turner. Is it Turner or CBS, whatever? Turner's one of them. Um, you know, that are that were happy that you didn't get too many of the, you know, the upset really here is NC State. That's your Cinderella. That's the only one, the only double digit, like you said. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean. Georgia, Georgia I, think you, I think you're absolutely right when you said it the other day that uh, everybody wants to see the first, and, and even Kerry said it, like first round, second round, there's even more in the second round, but like everybody wants to see those, you know, the Kentuckys get beat by the Oaklands and Yale beat Auburn. But then after that, they want to let, let's, let's get on with it. Uh, let's get on with the big teams. And 
I think that's what they've got so far. I mean, I, I'm interested in the UConn San Diego State game. That was a rematch from last year's national right. championship game, and San Diego State's pretty good, man. They're, they that dude that they got, their big yeah. guy, that Leduc guy, Lede. is really really Lede. good. Yeah, Lede. Lede. he's a hoss. He's, really, inside. he's a hoss. And to be real honest, um, I, personally, I think Bruce Pearl's got to be kicking himself. Because oh, absolutely. there's just nothing uh, about the way that turned out on Friday that makes any sense. You, you look at Yale's inability to handle uh, any of what San Diego State threw out there last night. That game was over with about five minutes left in the first half. It was a complete wipeout. And, right. you know, Bruce Pearl's got to be sitting there going, how did we let this happen? I think after Baker Mazzara got ejected, uh, that changed everything. Yeah, and it that's was huge, man. Um, I don't know why he did that. Well, did you see? Did you see right before that, Billy, the guy that he he popped kind of pushed him when they I were did. going down. They, they were they were running down, he, and and you've got to have more self discipline about more yourself yeah. than that. Absolutely, yeah. but he 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 literally did that right in front of the referee. Like if he wouldn't have done it right in front of the referee. He may have gotten away with it, but that, like that is like being really selfish because if you do something like that, you get caught. He got kicked out of the game. That was huge for Auburn. I, I even looked at my wife and I said, man, that's big right there. They may end up losing this game because of that, and that's yep. what happened. And they did. So here are the uh, matchups. As Kerry was. Yeah. T t story time with Kerry there. But uh, Kelly <laughs> – I mean, Thursday night right here, you get started. Arizona and Clemson. Clemson, a team coached by Brad Brownell, who's done a heck of a job this year. Now, overall, he's he's struggled, but he's got a good player in P.J. Hall that has kind of yeah, carried him. Really good. I don't think they yeah. match up super well with Arizona, though. No, they, they've got totally contrasting styles. Clemson wants to be very half-court. Arizona wants to push and run yeah. and gun and whatever. Yeah. So – UConn San Diego State is a rematch of last year's national title game. And to be honest, I think they've got this number pretty close to right. Most of the time when I see San Diego State, yeah, Ladie is terrific. But the rest of that group can't throw it in the ocean. That has always been their bugaboo. I am making them beat me outside. If I'm UConn, I have got Ladie in the witness protection program yeah. where he doesn't get out alive, you know, without them seeing it. I just don't think San Diego State's the one that's going to take UConn to the wire. North Carolina feels like the better team against Alabama, but there was a mental toughness last night to Alabama that impressed me because athletically, they were not the better team. No. That Grand Canyon bunch has got a ton of athletes. But again, the reputation, love the coat, by the way. I'm guessing that's a tribute to Wimp. To Wimp, yeah. Um, love it. But Bryce looked like a ball roller again. He did. He really did. They had no clue what they were doing on no. offense. No. No. I mean, got, if you would have just run something, run – I mean – there wasn't any semblance of any offensive set being run last uh -uh. night. No, it looked like a track and f if if it were a track and field meet, they'd have been great because they can run and jump with anybody. I'll say this, that was that was fun to watch though. Oh, it was an absolute war. Now you want a war? I'll give you a war. That Iowa State Illinois deal. Mm. Yeah. Give me a ticket to that game. Whew. That's gonna be good. Iowa State has, uh, you know, set the woods on fire. Illinois is quite a bit better than they have been. The uh, the kid Marcus Damask transfer from SIU has really solidified their starting lineup. Now let's go to Friday for a minute. And we'll start with the first one, which is NC State and Marquette. Keats was about to get fired at NC State. Yeah. And he has staved off, you know, the, the governor called and gave him a reprieve. 
They've won five in a row in the ACC tournament. They've won their first two in the NCAA tournament. I don't think they're going to beat Marquette, but I think this is probably going to go toward the wire and be a really tough game. Uh, DJ Burns against uh, Tyler Kolick there. Who, whoever wins out in that matchup probably go a big way. Game two, you got two great big men. You've got, uh, of course, uh, Zach Eady at Purdue, who, you know, seems to have grown into that body and no longer is the klutz that he felt like he was when he first got there. Graham E.K. E.D. versus E.K. 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 will give up a lot of size, but he won't give up anything in heart. That'll be an interesting matchup. I just don't see it for Gonzaga. I don't. It feels like their time might might run out here. Now, don't ask me where Duke came up with their explosion against James Madison. By the way, if you're just joining us, Vandy has hired Mark Byington as their new head coach. He is from James Madison. Looks like a press conference uh, to, I guess, make that official on Thursday. I'm sitting there going, where did Duke find another gear? Because whatever gear they found, they better bring it to the table against Houston. Houston will get after Duke. Duke, you better pack your lunch pail because Houston is going to give it to you if you don't. And that's what Tennessee did to Duke last year. Have, did they learn anything? Is Duke tough enough? We'll see. Who knows? Uh, Tennessee gets Creighton. Creighton can really shoot. Dalton Connect better be a whole lot better than he was Saturday. Yeah, I mean, he had, what, 18 points, but it wasn't the best 18 points he's had. I mean, it's no. got he's he needs to do a little bit more. Vescovy and James have to have a part if they want to win. They have got to get Vescovy way more involved in what they're doing on offense. Kelly, those are the eight matchups of the Sweet 16. George, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Uh, think think back a long time ago when Jim Valvano was at NC State. Well, wasn't it, isn't it kind of like the same situation? Like nobody thought anything about NC State, and they end up making it to the title game and beat Houston in the title game. That it kind of seems yeah. like that's what's happening now at NC State. It's funny. Uh, Carrie and I were have that, having that conversation earlier today on the phone. NC State. This was in a day and age where only the winner of the ACC tournament would get in. Mm -hmm. And so NC State uh, staves off a series of crazy, absolutely crazy deals to somehow win the ACC tournament. Yeah. In the opening game of the NCAA tournament, they get behind double digits to Pepperdine. And they force the game, if I remember correctly, to go to OT. There is a great 30 for 30 on that NC State team. Awesome. And I got to admit, I have not seen it yet this year. I try to see it every year before the tournament because it always gets me in the right frame of mind for it. It, it, was, it was one of the all-time incredible runs. Um the regional final, they beat Ralph Sampson in Virginia. Um, right. You know, it just incredible stuff. I, I don't know why I believe this, and it may not be true and it may not be fair, but some of the NCAA tournaments in the mid-'80s were, were unbelievable. And this one so far, it just doesn't have that feel. Not yet. Not yet. No. Yeah, I think you're right. Caitlin Clark came out and said that more eyes are on the women's tournament. and She might be right. She might be right, but I don't think most people around the country that made brackets are sweating out the women's bracket. Like, I still think the men's <laughs> – I still think the men's side is, you know, is, is the one people watch. But did you all see that Iowa State uh, – Big girl. I mean, she dominated. I don't know. I can't remember if they beat Oh, Tim. unbelievable. She's I a mean, freshman. She is huge and dominated. I think she had 40 um, in their – She did. I think it was their first-round game. And I know they played Stanford last night. 
it's hard to stay locked into it, but there's some big headline makers yeah. in those games. Like Middle and LSU, you know, saw Angel Reese was kind of waving back to, to one I, of the middle players. and I mean, there's more drama. Yeah, I like. mean, I'll admit, I turned on the, the middle game. Yeah. I like the first half when they, you know, they got up and then they start the second half, get up. I don't know whatever the biggest lead was. I know I saw it at 4134. Um the, there's more drama, but but the quality the quality isn't necessarily there consistently enough. I think that's the difference. But in the men's game, there's just hasn't been that pull. Well, you know? one of the things that this is just me. All I see is high pick and roll. Yeah. If you've seen one pick and roll, you've seen them all. Mm-hmm. And Everybody runs the same stuff. That's it, man. Everybody it gets on this bandwagon. Way. Yeah. It does feel everybody, that way. Yeah, everybody gets on one bandwagon and they go with it, man. That's that's what uh what Charles Barkley said about last night about your boy Bryce Drew, man. That was uh he brought it out there. I mean, that's he what did. people watch. I mean, they enjoy watching Charles Barkley and Kenny the Jet Smith, all those guys, because, you know, Kerry said it, they might not be watching college basketball, but they can uh, – they make it exciting when you when you watch those guys. And then Charles is not scared to say what's on his mind. He was absolutely right. If you watch the game, I mean, I could have done that. I guess y'all call it ball rollers out now. Is that what we're doing? I can do that. Roll the ball. I got a theory. Okay, you ready for this one? I us hear it. The rims are tighter on the NCAA level than they are in the pros. I I have no idea what how do they do are that. You, what do you mean by tighter? Are you I, saying? I'm saying that I believe that there are more balls that go halfway down yeah. on the college level well, and come out than I ever see on the pro level. I noticed this at the SEC tournament. Um, you know, the arenas they play in throughout conference play are are tighter. You know, the sight lines are a little bit different than the when you get into these conference tournament arenas. That could be a part of it where the, your shot's just a little off. It's not as comfortable. and But other teams have big arenas too. I, but I think that's a part of it. I'm talking to a lot of people at the SEC tournament and now in the NBA. You get to these NBA arenas – the sight lines are a lot different. I just think they loosen up the rims where even I can shoot on them. Hey, don't go there, George. No, let's not. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the break, and then uh, we will get into a little bit of um, NFL owners meetings. There are a couple of pieces of news that came out that are, you know, um, vital to uh, United States security. <laughs> so <Absolutely>. stay tuned <laughs> it was the most horrible experience that any mother could ever go through I knew that I needed to get help my friend she immediately said you need to call Bart Durham and you guys were there within an hour you guys are like family for us yeah sure is nice to connect with the people that you're doing your best to help. As the trusted premier custom home builder in Middle Tennessee, Donnelly Timmons has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Whether you're looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and every remodel is unique, luxurious, and completed on time within budget. Founders Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly have over 25 years of construction experience in the Nashville area. Together, they have completed projects in Forest Hills, Oak Hill, Green Hills, Franklin, and Brentwood. Dustin and Joey believe that communication is the most important aspect of all construction projects. Therefore, they personally manage each project themselves and are involved in job site activities on a daily basis. Their commitment to quality and integrity has earned them an outstanding reputation among their clients. Contact them to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects. Give them a call at 615-456-7983 or log on to DonleyTimmons.com. 
The George Plaster Show is Nashville's best sports talk, 2 to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. There's a podcast version available on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Looking for more than just awards and trophies? Southern Trophy House is your one-stop solution. For over 60 years, their team has created lasting impressions with a personalized touch. From embroidery to screen-printed apparel to corporate awards, signs, and name badges, they have everything you need to keep your brand shining bright. With their knowledgeable customer service team, you can relax as they create, produce, pack, and ship merchandise and awards on time and on budget. That includes etched crystal awards, custom cut acrylic, name badges, embroidered Richardson ball caps, banners, screen printed t-shirts, laser engraved Yeti cups, and knives. Recognize your hardworking team from Southern Trophy House, where they do their best to help you recognize your best. Located at 2705 Nolensville Pike in Nashville, give them a holler, 615-256-7295. Visit southerntrophy.com, Southern Trophy House, for all your personalization and recognition needs. So the NFL owners meetings are going on right now in Orlando. And this Kelly, is, what do they do down there? You know what they do. It's the same thing they do at the combine, Billy. They drink and they meet with their boys. That's what they do. Here's a here's another thing. They lie. They lie. I mean, that's that's the common that's the common world nowadays. Plus, the organizations pay for all their travel and all that drinking and all that stuff so it's on it's on the organization don't worry about it okay so now that we've got that solved let's get to new england where gerard mayo earlier this morning said something to the effect of hey we're open to talk it's not an open and shut case that we're taking a quarterback uh we're open for business if anybody wants to make us an offer so let me ask you all this. Why isn't it an open and shut case that it's a quarterback? It could be lying. Well, he, well, I mean, he, he may think that they've got too many other needs. Uh, you know, he's got to build this thing back up again. And you obviously got to have a quarterback, but he's thinking maybe we've got too many holes that we just can't go out and get that right now. We've got to get a good base a good foundation before we can really get a top-notch quarterback in here. So I don't know, man, it might be that far down. Who knows? I'm not in the, I'm not up there and I haven't really, you know, it's funny that the New England Patriots were on TV all the time when Brady was there and when Belichick was there. And then these last couple of years, they're in the witness protection program, as you like to say, George, nobody knows anything about them. So that's the only thing I could think of. Uh, But you know, with him saying that, you know, they're, they're probably in there going, yeah, we're going to take one of the QBs, you know. So you, you just never know what comes out of these guys' mouths nowadays. And they all try to hide stuff because if some other team is looking to get one of the quarterbacks that he wants, then he's going to put some stuff out there. Well, I, you know, the guys that, that are his teammates don't think he's very – he's a very good guy and all this stuff. And it's just uh, – I don't know. It's a bunch of bogus until we get to the actual draft and when they actually take who they're going to get. Okay, in New York, we had a pair of different pieces of quarterback news. Mm -hmm. The Giants' ownership has apparently given the green light to the GM and the coach to draft a quarterback at number six if they so desire, in spite of the fact that they've got Daniel Jones on the hook for a wad. For a wad. And they should have have thought about it. Yeah, they should have. They should have thought about giving that to Saquon Barkley, and they would probably still have him in the, you know, in the Giants uniform instead of going to the division rival Philadelphia Eagles. So, 
I just think they botched that whole thing. I, I don't know how you can give Daniel Jones that kind of money. Like, I, I've watched him, and I, I'm not saying I'm a quarterback guru or anything, but I used to sit in the meetings with with my quarterback coach in Cleveland, uh, Carl Smith, and, and he was really good at evaluating talent. And I've been able to do that over the years. I, I hadn't put it into use, obviously. hadn't gone to anybody. But, like, you could tell that, you know, Daniel Jones is a tough kid, but, like, is he going to get you to where you want to go? I just – I don't know that. I mean, but but they paid him like he is the guy – and now when you do something like that, you're just saying, hey, he's probably not the guy, so let's just move on. Meanwhile, across town, J-E-T-S owner Woody Johnson says they will keep Zach Wilson if they can't trade him. Ooh, well, isn't that special? Yeah, that's a tough situation for my man Zach Wilson because he does not want to go back out there on that football no. field in New York. But – but I don't know, man. Sign, I just didn't they sign Tyrod Taylor as a backup? Uh, uh, I haven't seen that. They may have, they George. Did, I don't know. Yeah. I know. I know that he went somewhere. I mean, he was he was with the Giants, and now he's with the Jets. Okay, that's nice. So yeah, I mean, you did. I, I don't know. I'm, I just I think Zach Wilson has an opportunity in this league somewhere, but I just don't think it's with the New York Jets. I think as an owner, you've got to understand, like. He just didn't do it here, no matter what we do on the field. Once he goes out there, I mean, the stench from what's coming from the stands, is just he, – he's never going to be successful there. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe he gets back on the field because I don't want guys to mess up and to end their careers. But, man, his his confidence in, in the New York market area is not very good right now. Now that Minnesota has lost a quarterback, um, why am I not hearing Ryan Tannehill's name? Uh, maybe, maybe that ship has sailed for him. I mean, maybe it has, George. You don't hear anything. Well, look, do we think he's a starter? That's, the whole, that's what you're you talking about. That's the que- that's the question that you've got to ask yourself. All, all these and and if he hadn't been picked up by now, people don't think he's a starter. They probably think that he's a back up and he can come in and win some games if our starter goes out but obviously they're not considering him as a starter anymore that's why it's being that's why it's so so hard for what's going on now for him with getting picked right. up with somebody okay i'm not trying to act like the president of his fan club but you can't tell me that he's not right now better than sam darnold in minnesota Well, he's 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 done it for a long time in the National Football League. Sam Darnold has not done it, uh, and and that's that's a one of the, that's another case we were just talking about. Uh, you know, with Zach Wilson, that's another case, and Daniel Jones, of a guy coming out of college. He's ultra talented. I mean, I, I can remember watching the USC game when the when the guy said he played basketball, baseball, football. I did all those. But, like, he, he he turned the ball over all the time at USC. I mean, he put the ball in situations where it was not very good in the situation of the game. And I always said, man, somebody they're, they're going to take this guy, and then what's he going to do? I, I just – the the coaching in the National Football League, that's, that's what they always say. There's like, well, he went to USC, one of the powerhouses of the country, but they didn't coach him right. I can do that. I can fix all that. I told Bruce, I told Bruce that about I'm not gonna tell you the guy, but I said, Bruce, you gotta fix that. He's like, Oh, I get it, I'll get it. And then they end up getting rid of the guy. And I was like, Yeah, no, you didn't get it because he's always gonna turn the ball over. And that's what Sam Darnold does. I mean, he's an athletic guy, but he turns the ball over and he puts the ball in situations that you shouldn't as an NFL quarterback. You just can't do that. Okay. Last one coming out of the the owners' meetings. The Dolphins have apparently made an offer to Odell Beckham oh, Jr. Yeah, Beckham. yeah. Now think about, you know, what's already there in the yeah. stretch the field category. Why wouldn't he sign there? This is a, this is a really good kind of last opportunity for him. Yeah. No, he, he doesn't well, have think- to be the guy. No, he's not going to be the guy anymore. I mean, that's that's we we we've discussed that about many players, but uh, yeah, when you got Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, all those guys, I mean, you you're talking about 
making defensive coordinators have some ambient at night because they can't go to sleep because they've got to defend all that. And then you've got a quarterback who's pretty accurate. But, you know, I just don't – I don't know how mentally tough those guys are. Do y'all? I mean, let, let's – I mean, they've got a, they've got bounds of talent. They've got guys that can run. Uh, their defense is really good. But I just – I don't know how mentally tough they are in this league right now. I, I'll, I'll have to see it. they got to win some more. But – Unless you have home field advantage, I said it a couple weeks ago, unless they have right. home field advantage where they can stay in sunny South Florida, it's not going to work because when you have to go to Kansas City or you've got to go to Buffalo, that's a tough place to play in the weather, and you got to do it. You and do I don't it. know, and, you know, you hear this stuff about, well, you've got to acclimate to it. Well, how do you, when you play a game near Christmas, it's 75 degrees with 70% humidity, <laughs> how do you how do you, um, you know, how well, do you create this. that when a week later you're going to go KC and freeze your butt off? Yeah, I just think it's kind of a mindset. And I, I don't know how you do it. I, I said that when you asked that like two weeks ago. When, I, I think you probably got to take your team and, and you know that you're playing in Kansas City or Buffalo or somewhere that's really cold and it's going to snow. I think you've got to find a place where you can take your guys and you do acclimate to the weather. Uh, because it's totally different when you're, like you said, in South Florida, it's 75 degrees on Christmas, and then you got to go where it's two degrees at nighttime and you're playing. It's it's a different deal, and you got to get your mind right, George. You really do. And if if you could take a team somewhere, you know, maybe in Minnesota, and and find a find a practice area where you can, you, it's it costs a lot of money for teams, but if you can do that, maybe you can get over that hump. I just don't see it. They got plenty of money. Uh, Kelly, we have some late finals in the yes, CIT, sir. which is always always big. A highly oh, really? coveted tournament. Oh yeah. Okay. High Tell point us. today beat Cleveland State ninety seven to not, excuse me ninety three to seventy four. And as all of you know, Cleveland State was the school that the NCAA <laughs> was so mad at. Over Kentucky, <laughs> that they oh, added yeah. an extra year. That gave them an extra year. <laughs> Here's a biggie. Arkansas State beat Montana today, 74 to 61. And th this is all leading up to me saying, look, there's not a lot of stuff tonight. Fairfield leads Chicago State five to nothing a minute into the game. <laughs> hopefully, we'll Chicago a, State. <laughs> hopefully, we'll have a final by tomorrow. Seattle and Evansville play today. Wow, the Seahawks are coming to town. And <laughs> Purdue-Fort Wayne tonight plays Tarleton State. Tarleton? I've heard of Tarleton State. Yeah. Where is that? Where is that, George? Do you know? I don't have a clue where it is. I've heard of it, though. That's crazy yeah. because I've heard of Tarleton State. Let me also say this. Once I have the inf info, who cares? <laughs> okay. After the break, we'll have stat of the day. No, we won't. We'll have plaster bet of the day. Let me explain where this one's going tonight. No college hoops on the men's side other than Seattle at Evansville. Uh, not a whole lot of NBA, but an NHL game that has huge implications for your red hot and I mean red hot Nashville Predators. That and very little more when we come back. Forget the fact that Sir Speedy Music City is owned by my BGA classmate James Warren. Their work stands on its own merit. James and his staff do incredible work as evidenced by the huge banners at the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. If you're looking for quality to help your marketing and business communications and you want it at a reasonable price, these are your folks. Call them at 615-832-9511 or go to print at sirspeedymusiccity.com and be sure to tell them Plaz sent you. Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. 
They also have several Iron Mike pitching machines as well as a hit tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Venture Express has been helping people in this area for more than 40 years. They're headquartered in Murfreesboro with over 30 years of dedicated fleets involving production, manufacturing, and corrugated experiences. They're an asset-based company with over 700 tractors, 4,000 trailers, and 800 drivers. If you need their help, dial them up 615-793-9500 or log on to Venture Express. Com. Over the years, more men have started to seek help for hormone deficiencies and imbalances. And Dr. Jeffrey Lodge and wife Daphne, along with their experienced staff, give men the treatment required to improve their quality of life, improve your immune system, energy level, cognitive function, and more. There's no better time to achieve a healthy lifestyle. What are you waiting for? Give Cool Springs MD a call today for an appointment at 615-486-3458 or visit the website coolspringsmd.com. You know, starting to save for your future doesn't have to be difficult. Let Wilson Bank and Trust help tone up your financial goals this year. Our certificates of deposits or CDs can help your money work harder with our competitive rates, earning you more than ever before. WBT checking options allow you to earn rewards you can really use, like a high interest rate or cash back on check card purchases when you meet some e-banking qualifications. Visit your closest Wilson Bank and Trust office or online at wilsonbank.com to get started today. Member FDIC. Final segment on a Monday. Scoreboard update on the women's side. NC State leads the Lady Vols in Raleigh 37 to 29. Five and a half to play until halftime in that one. Tennessee, the six seed. NC State, the host three seed there in that regional. All right, Plaster's Bet of the Day, brought to you by Bart Durham Injury Law. Give them a call, 615-242-9000, or log on to bartdurham.com. Let's take a look at the weekend that was. And not not all that terrible. Better than, than what we've seen. Auburn did not cover, of course. Florida lost a wild one to Colorado. Tennessee, I deserved better on that Florida one. Yeah, they... Their defense didn't show up in that. No. Tennessee did not cover, but UNC and Gonzaga did. These numbers are pathetic. <laughs> We've got to improve. So, so you got to pick it up. Yeah, you just let me worry about it. Change <laughs> is needed. Uh, no, not that kind of change. <laughs> because if I'm out, you're really out. So here we go. <laughs> Um, are you going to make it? Uh, no. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> Kelly, I just don't know if he's going to make it. It's throat lozenges. Bring some throat lozenges tomorrow, Billy. I had that problem quite a few times. I mean, last year I had to get off the show cause I couldn't talk, but uh, like I had this like three months ago and I just popped a throat lozenger every time, man. Let's go grow up. Uh, Be professional. Throat lozenger. Good Be gracious. professional, he says. Okay, here's what we're doing tonight. This game has massive implications for the Preds. Vegas is in St. Louis to take on the underdog Blues. And with my rose-colored glasses on, I have decided that we need, we the Preds, need St. Louis to win instead of Vegas. Thus, I'm going St. Louis as a fairly okay. substantial dog to beat Vegas in St. Louis. Here are the scenarios. If St. Louis wins, they would go to 
seven points behind the Preds, but now would have played one more game than Nashville. It's been a long time since we've said that about anybody. If Vegas wins, Vegas moves within three points of the Preds. They will both have played the same number of games. Preds would have 88 points. Vegas would have 83, and the two teams play here tomorrow night at Bridgestone. Now, Kelly, here's what's gotten crazy. Okay, I never thought I would say this, but there is now becoming a battle between Winnipeg and Nashville for the Preds to get into the third position in the Central Division. Really? Yeah, it's crazy, but this is what happens. If you go 17 games in a row Seriously. without missing out on points, Winnipeg today, 71 games played, so are the Preds, 93 points to 88, and the two teams play in Nashville April the 9th. Wow. There. That's kind of amazing what the Predators have done. I mean, it's uh, they, they beat the Florida Panthers the other night too, didn't they? Like three to nothing. Stomp them. Now, wow. <laughs> the Detroit game Saturday. Whew, Can you say that dull? A, that was, well, may have been dull to you. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> I was there, and it was anything but dull. How was that, how was that crowd after that goal? Delirious. From, from Forsberg. Ooh, they went nuts. And to the Detroit fans sitting in my row, do not come back anytime soon. Were they rude, George? They were a little um, out there. Alcoholic? Alcoholically motivated? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's what made it even worse. Really? Was, yeah, wow. we, couldn't really, we couldn't really pin it down on just simply alcohol. Anyway, okay. we're done. Good luck to the Blues tonight. Not that we care about you at all, but if it will help the Preds, go Blues. See you tomorrow. We'll have a good show. See you.